You can tell me what this other ingredient is that I can't figure out. <laughs> Sorry about this. Oh no, that's okay. That was me. Was that a Monday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. office. I got my computer and stuff in there, and that bag on my shoulder was starting to get pretty heavy, so it's easier to roll it around than it is carried around. Great grandma, how many you got? One and a half. Okay. One is on the way. I ain't here yet. I'm you know, living. Oh, okay. They think I care less. Not so much fun. Adrian, got any houses for sale? Want to show up, baby? Can you help? And because Absolutely. That's, that's what I'm talking about. But what if I need more than mine? No you need more than one? More than one. Oh, that's right. You can handle it. So, <laughs> without a doubt, they will, okay, Yeah, because there's a lot of people. And I mean, you know, somebody can buy them, want to do something. Yeah, good. So the first I just think there's a new potential there. I think I have a pen. Nope. We're fine. I have one. I always have one. The new attorney here. I have it. Seriously. Thank you, though. <laughs> St. Stephen? I saw that. And if we started. Yeah, I thought. I didn't think about it. Before the year was over. Yeah. I got worse than it is. I can do it. It makes sense. If he's having it, I'm happy to do it. What's the people think about being in the city council? I think she's really enjoying it. I'm like, so many others. Hey, Nick. You know, it was just, it was, you know, it was a $10,000 question. Yeah, it was nothing submitted, and he was just yeah. kicking tires to see if there was any info. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It's eleven o'clock. I'm close to it. <laughs> Anybody back here that is coming? Nick is back there. All right. Good. We'll wait. We're waiting on Nick. Uh, is, he, is he back there? He's back there. Okay. And make sure more. <laughs> Phil is filling his plate. <laughs> no, we don't. So the, 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 the had to be kind of a mixed thing. Oh, very so nice. Yeah. 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 Made a mixed thing for Betty. Well, she... Uh, her brother told us that she was found there the chair or slumped over and then and then oh yeah so then the story changed because the aunt told her you know the circumstances they said no and she's like there's a investigation going on with the sheriff's department because she was a drug paraphernalia she had a crack okay Okay, y'all ready? All right, Rich, how are you? We'll call it to order. And before we look at the changes in the agenda, you want to comment on your email, Josh? Sure, if you received an email from me this morning, that was an error. from your review team, not you guys. I knew it's right after I sent it. So if you don't have to do anything, Thank you'll see you. that list later on. Those are the best kind. All right, you need changes? Uh, one change, new business item number 11 has withdrawn their application. 
All right, so old business. Okay, old business item number one is a request by Lawrence Properties for a site plan approval for South Maple Townhomes Phase 2, a residential development on about 1.55 acres and an unaddressed property on South Maple Street, zone RM6 and more 3. Staff has no open comments for this. Okay. Everybody okay? Good. Okay. Old business item number two, request by National Cement Company of Alabama for site plan approval for site site development plans of National Cement Distribution Terminal, non-residential development on about 12.69 acres at 2760 Highway 109 North, zone plan business, industrial park, and Ward 6. The applicant has requested payment in lieu of sidewalks. The fee will be $21,360. The block length shall not be more than 1,200 feet in length, and block perimeter shall not be more than 5,700 feet in length. Block length and block perimeter far exceed the requirements. However, there is a valid hardship as they would need to cross a railroad to connect to the west. A variance has been requested for block length, and a variance has been requested for the block perimeter. Anybody want to speak to this one? Thoughts, comments? <clears throat> Is there any uh, sidewalks out there to connect to? No. In that area. Okay. We'll deal with the payment fluid then. All right, so we'll leave it on the agenda. We have to deal with the variances, obviously. Mm -hmm. Number three. Old business item number three is a request by Kimball Mengelberg for future land use plan amendment. Approval for about 49.37 acres at the Remington Grove project at unaddressed properties on Trousdale Ferry Pike and Bluebird Road from residential two units per acre to residential four units per acre and residential 16 units per acre. The properties to the north are indicated as residential two units per acre to the east as residential two units per acre and rural preservation open space. To the south and west as residential two units per acre, rural preservation open space, mixed housing, and residential 16 units per acre on the future land use plan. This is a recommendation of City Council. The expected City Council readings for this ordinance are as follows. The first reading and public hearing are March 7th. The second reading is March 21st. Why don't you go ahead and talk about four and five, and then we'll see if somebody wants to comment from the audience. Okay. Old business item number four is the plan of service for this property. It's 49.37 acres. Um, they are zoning to RM6 and RD9 to be added to Ward 2. Uh, and then old business item number five is the annexation and zoning approval request for the same properties. Um, Zoning to RM6 and RD9 to be added to Ward 2. All adjacent properties are zoned R2 in the county. Future land use plan identifies areas residential two units per acre, which would not support this request. The requested future land use designation as residential four units per acre and residential 16 units per acre would support this request. These items are a recommendation to the council. Okay. Anybody want to speak to this? Hi, I'm Kimball Mingleberg. Um, uh, kind of where, where we're going with this is, you know, I, I am in real estate and I've had several clients over the past couple of years that are um, in the, the, you know, 55 and up category and it's been near impossible to find them anything. Um, I even pulled some numbers and I'm, I'm happy to share these statistics with you if you'd like a printout. Um, in the past year, there has only been eight properties come available uh, in the 55 and up communities. Um, hence, that's where we're going for with the, with the RM6 zoning. Uh, we want that to be a gated 55 and up community. Um, it, it's a great area for it, but since uh, you're so close to to the city, um, and, and you know, I really feel like there's a there's a good need for that. Um, as for the RD9 section, um, we're really trying to bring some single family housing out there. Uh, there's there's apartments a lot of townhomes, a lot of duplexes um, all around that area. 
um, in some research that I've, I've done on it, you know, home prices out there are selling for between the two, 250 to 400 price range. Um, and you just can't put a, that price range product on a half acre lot. Um, it just, you know, we, we need the, the quarter acre lots for it to make sense out there. Um, we have already, as, as you see, we, we've already talked about all the utilities um, and that, you know, they are available there at the street uh, with the exception of the gas. Um, if, um, and I'm happy to answer any further questions. Thank you. So it's been a while since we talked about this at the SP Annexation Committee. Can you review what the review, the results were of those? Do you remember? <clears throat> we didn't like it because it creates an island of city in the county. And if they were able to connect it, we were going to be for it. But since they are not connecting to the city, then we were against it. Yeah. And I've reached out to the, the apartments. Um, I've sent them an email. They did respond to the emails saying they were interested. Um, I've had three um calls to them, um, left a couple messages, they left me one, but at this point, um, last two haven't had any responses, so whether they're really serious about moving forward, I think they, they are, but it, it may not be a high priority for them. I understand. Okay, okay. any other questions, thoughts? All right, we'll leave it on the agenda. Number six. Old business item number six request by Summit Builders Corp for rezoning approval for about 2.57 acres of the SP North College Sycamore Project at 215 North College Street. Commercial service in North College Sycamore SP in Ward 2. In your packets, we have a table comparing their proposed SP with the downtown mixed use district, which is the closest, and the Zoning district call for a future land use plan. Uh, just hit some of the highlights. They aren't, they're removing some of the uses that are allowed in DMU, but they're not adding any additional uses. Uh, when it comes to their lot density, the DMU would offer 54 units, which would be 21 units an acre. Their SP is for 87 units, would be 34 units an acre. They are increasing the allowed height of the building from three to four stories. We have had them add in that they would raise the residential units a foot and a half. This would apply to the North College Street side, so the foot and a half from street level. Uh, create some separation there. The sidewalks, the DMU calls for eight foot sidewalks. That is what they're proposing on North College. On the Sycamore side, they're going with five foot, but they have agreed to do an average of six foot along that road frontage uh, with no planting strips required. We don't require any foundation planting in DMU, but this is where they're relocating their uh, landscaping that would traditionally be in the planting strip. So it would be between the sidewalk of the building instead of the sidewalk and the road. This would include street furnishings, trees every 40 feet, shrubs where that's not possible. For their building materials, it can be pretty much the same, adding split face CMU is really the only change from DMU there. They are adding an arrangement section. This ties back to the design of the building with the base body and cap uh, orientation of the building. There isn't one required in DMU, but they are adding that as a standard in their SP. For articulation, they are adding articulation standards, pretty consistent with other districts in the city, but the DMU itself does not have any at this time. Transparency, they're keeping the same. They're adding secondary uh, transparency. They're allowed to re reduce the amount of required transparency up to 35%. For attachments, they're removing stoops and decks as allowed attachments. They're adding awnings and canopies as an allowed attachment. Their porch depth and balcony depths no longer need to be a clear depth. They can just be the total depth. And they're increasing the balcony depth from a minimum of four feet to a minimum of six feet. For the off-street parking, they're keeping it pretty much the same. They do have a statement there about not being able to park between the build two line, the building and uh, the street. Uh, we were just suggested be cleaned up to uh, be a little bit more clear. 
That's all the changes between the DMU and the SP. Uh, this has been at the committee multiple times. They have made all the recommended changes that were suggested by the SP annexation committee at the January meeting. Any comments? I don't have any comments. I didn't hear at the very beginning. I mean, they. What about the articulation with the pyramid height? So it's not a straight roof line. I didn't hear. So it. they have they have updated the standards. Have just uh, doing that now they do have a slight change in the parapet height uh, as you can see shown here and then they're also doing the facade articulations so they've brought out the building more and then added balconies as well so they are now meeting the articulation requirements and have added some change mm -hmm. comments from the audience okay all right it's on the agenda New business number one. New business item number one is a request by D.R. Horton for final plat approval for Woodbridge Glen, phase two, section one, a 25 lot subdivision on about 4.44 acres and an unaddressed property on Pintail Point, zoned RS6 and Ward 4. There's just two minor note corrections that are needed for this, and there's no other comments. I think we can cover those note corrections under the being in compliance with engineering standards. Okay. So consent. Consent. Very good. <clears throat> this is item number two, request by Mason Properties, Inc. for site plan approval for Mason Center, a non-residential development on about 5.23 acres at 201 Prior Creek Road, zoned plan business industrial park in Ward 6. Uh, there's a minor note correction that is needed. They're requesting payment in lieu of sidewalk construction uh, at the with the total fee of eleven thousand forty dollars. An eight wide found eight foot wide foundation planting along the front facade of the building is required, excluding entrances. A variance has been requested, and the fee has been paid. A copy of it has been added to the end of your staff report. Okay. But in the audience want to speak to this one? If not, questions, comments? All right. It's on the agenda. New business item number three, request by Southland Park Place Township LLC for site plan approval for Madison at Township, a residential development on about 14.46 acres. 6715 Lebanon Road, Zone Commercial Neighborhood, and Ward 6. The only comments we have is they need to update their landscaping plan uh, to include the new parking lot islands that have been added to the <laughs> plan sheet, and then some minor note corrections as well. All right. Is that, can that be covered under compliance with the engineering requirements? Good. So anybody want to speak to this one? Guess not. All right. Number three is consent. Number four. New business item number four is a request by service properties for site plan approval for Ballard Point Reserve, a residential development of about 1.1 acres at 0. 0.7271 and 289 Charlesville Ferry Pike, zoned R2 in Ward 2. Uh, the road showing here going through their site it needs to be a private road to give road frontage to two lane lock parcels to the north. Maybe it needs to be extended to the property line. Foundation plantings are needed on facades facing the right of way. The landscape plan does not show them. Street trees need to be placed between the sidewalk and road, placed in grades, planters, or wells. Uh, the applicant has now submitted a variance uh, to place them behind the sidewalk. Uh, street furnishings are also needed in that area every one, for every 100 feet of road frontage, and they have a few minor note corrections that are needed. So what's covered by requested uh, by a requested variance and what is not? The only variance that's been requested is the street tree placement um, to not <clears throat> between the sidewalk and road and not in great supply. Well. So there are other things that are not in compliance where no variance has been requested. Is that correct? At this time, yes, that's correct. I think it's not ready. Still, it's not ready. We need one or the other. Okay. All right. So number four is off. <clears throat> Number five. New business item number five, request by CR 109 Apartments for site plan approval for Highway 109 Multifamily, a residential development on about 22 acres at 6438 <coughs> Degree Ridge Road. 
Some commercial service in Ward 4. This plane might look a little bit familiar to you. Um, we've seen it before. They have resubmitted. They've included a right-hand turn lane on off of Hickory Ridge Road onto Highway 109. And they've shown now on their plans additional road improvements uh, going to a three-lane section of their project. So I... It doesn't sound appropriate for us to be dealing with this until it is approved by the county. Is that correct? I figured that would happen after. No, it would, <coughs> it would be covered in your um, general approval subject to staff comments. It would include the county staff comments. But we've included in there <clears throat> that it needs to um, meet this the city and the county, you know, mm -hmm. agreed stand what they want. And, and that's what they're showing. And that could be done subsequent to our Yeah, so it'll, action. Be, it'll be part of the um, um, approval subject to. Okay. Is this the one that we voted down a couple of months ago? Yeah, it was. And the reason given was traffic. Um, so they've, they've, what was missing, what we haven't, didn't have before were the, the improvements on Hickory Ridge Road um, that they've asked for. And some of these, um, if I'm not mistaken, go beyond what their traffic study said and is what we're asking them to do. What improvements did they make? It sounds a right-hand turn. Um, yeah, at the top, there's a right-hand turn, and then they've made this section. They're really continuing a three-lane section. Um, Past their parcel? Yeah, I mean, it, so right, right now, what they were showing at first was just a small left-hand turn lane, but in reality, with the improvements from Publix um, and what they're doing, the three-lane section goes all the way back um, past there. Uh, how long is that road frontage on Hickory Ridge next to Publix? Next to Publix? They've, they've already done, widened that to three lanes there <coughs> past the Publix entrance now. Yeah. So it's about 300 feet long right now. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, it looks like it's going about double the length that. Uh, Three lanes, plus putting the, the right-hand turn lane in. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Is there anything else? <coughs> now that, this is an older, um, an older development, and they came back and they updated their traffic study with some new numbers, which is common. Um, and the traffic study, the level of service, and getting the review of the traffic study um, show that a right turn lane up there at the intersection of the signal would benefit the overall operation. And then working with the county, this section of road is actually county road, but we work closely with the road commission, and um, it's their kind of their standard that they put in left turn lanes. And we don't usually allow turn lanes to taper in and out. We want it to be consistent all the way through. So they're extending that three lane section where we're into the public's improvements past their second entrance. So you can have left turn lanes and you know, really like that's continuous. If that makes sense. So if we recommend this, and then they don't meet your requirements then I, what? this is pretty much conceptual so we still have to uh, review the engineering specifications for you know the storage and the taper length and the road width and all that that gets into when we design or when we review it after you guys approve it so this is and the county does the same thing okay but it cannot go past you until you are happy with what they're suggesting is that so this would be contingent on contingent them. on approval, right? So anybody in the audience want to speak to this one? Okay. So I think we have a, a plan. We can deal with it contingent too. So all right. So number five is on. Number six. Item number six, request by Vogue Power Partners LLC for site plan approval for Vogue Power's whole replacement at Lebanon High School and non-residential development about 0.05 acres at 500 Blue Devil Boulevard. Zone rural residential in the South Hartman overlay in the four. So this high plan was approved by planning commission at the February 2020 meeting and received its final approvals from the city in November of 2021. Uh, their three year approval is about to expire next month. So they're back for reapproval. Uh, they've made no changes to their stamped plans from November of 21. Simply an extension or a. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. They've, they've asked for an approval, but we could we could just as easily just extend their previous approval. Comments from the audience? All right, good. So, <coughs> this is a good one. Oh, I'm sorry. You do. Uh, I, I was just going to say, 
I'm Michael Sandifer here on behalf of Oak Towers. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Seven and eight. Here's this item number seven is a request by staff for future land use plan amendment approval for about 5.88 acres at an unaddressed property on Central Pike to be included in the Rural Preservation Open Space Area in Ward 4. Properties to the north are indicated as public institutional residential, to the east as Rural Preservation Open Space, to the south as light industrial, and to the west as light industrial and interchange commercial on the future land use plan. This commission recommended to city council and county commission at their last meeting to DNX or contract the city limits for this property. That's a recommendation to city council. Number eight is a request by staff for zoning approval for about 5.88 acres at unaddressed property on Central Pike to A1 in the county. The properties to the north are zoned RS20 to the south as Plain Business Industrial Park, to the west as Plain Business Industrial Park and Commercial General. All the adjacent properties in the county are zoned A1. The future the request for future land use designation as rural preservation open space would support this request. This commission, as I said before, recommended to city council and county commission that this be DNX from the city. And this one is a recommendation to county commission. Has the city council taken action on that DN annexation? Uh, not yet. They'll do that in February. But it's appropriate for us to go ahead and deal with this? Yeah, ideally this would have gone at the same time as the, mm -hmm. the de-annexation. They have the request in um, and we will forward this on to the county commission. It'll all come to the county commission to um, accept the zoning and, and um, <clears throat> sometimes theoretically if, if we had a road in there then the county could say we don't want it because we don't want to take over your road mm -hmm. and something like that. I don't see anything like that happening here but we do want everything to be in our future land use plan, and we all want everything to be zoned. So um, these are just cleaning that up. Okay. Questions, thoughts? All right. We'll leave it. And this is, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, no, please. Uh, please. I'm Katie Henson. Um, I'm the landowner. My brothers and I are the landowners of this piece of property that accidentally got annexed in the city at some point in time. Um, I'm fine with whatever you all decide. Obviously, let's all be honest, this is not going to stay rural preservation open space for the long term. Um, I realize any developer can come along at some point in time and ask for it to be annexed back into the city and ask for the future land use plan to be changed. Honestly, I think it would be short-sighted to go ahead and put it back in as rural preservation open space. You've got another chance to get it where it really kind of needs to be in the future land use plan. That's my opinion. You all can do whatever you want to do. It's not going to affect me one way or another or the two horses that are currently grazing out there. So <laughs> they don't really care what you want to do. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter to me one way or another because I do. we don't have any plans with any developers right now, but obviously everything else in that quadrant has been developed. At some point, that's going to be developed. So you all have got a chance to kind of say which direction you would like it to take at this point. So that's just my two cents. Okay, so this is a recommendation. Oops. Re re recommendation to the county, is it correct? Yeah, recommendation to well the future land use will actually go to our city council. Okay. The zoning will go to the county commission. Okay, good. I, I think if we make it all <clears throat> congruent with what, what else is there yep. adjacent to it, uh, if if a developer does come, then they're not just gonna take that one spot, they're gonna try to take several lots. So if, if it's all going from RPO to whatever they're wanting to use it for, I think it would be easier and less mind numbing for them to do that than to have part that's industrial, commercial, whatever, and then have to drag more in with it. Sure. Yeah, and this is the most conservative, um, most restrictive zoning, you know, three acre zoning um, with if the future land use we call for. Uh, we do anticipate if it comes back in, it'll be request for annexation and zoning will happen at that time you know either way if it gets annexed or zoning has to happen so yeah other questions thoughts all right it's on nine and ten New business item number nine is a request by LNB plumbing LLC for future land use plan amendment approval for about 0.43 acres at 222 Canesville Road from commercial mixed use to interchange commercial and Ward 2. 
Properties to the north are indicated as light industrial, to the east and west as commercial mixed use, and to the south as residential 16 units an acre on the future land use plan. This is a recommendation to the city council. Okay. Anybody want to speak to this one? <clears throat> Questions, thoughts? Would this be considered spot zoning? It falls kind of in a gray area. <clears throat> we know that, I mean, you can't rezone half a building that, that got shot down in Chattanooga. Um, we have seen 0.8 acres um, be ruled as not spot zoning. This is 0.4, so no court's rule. So we have no idea, as far as I know, unless Andy has something different. It's kind of in that in-between area. It does, I mean, it has industrial across the street. I mean, that might be, I think what they would do, want to do would be consistent with the industrial across the street. So that would be an option to avoid spot zoning would be to ask them to go with what's across the street. What is allowed in the interchange commercial that is not allowed in the light industrial? The light industrial is going to have significantly less commercial activity in it. Um, it's not going to have the full range of commercial. So that's going to be the big difference is um, commercial general, the interchange commercial future land use plan would, would have more commercial type uses in it. So car lots, although car lots would be allowed in both, but you know, just general retail, um, trade, um, stores. Um, is this plumbing company shop. trying to sell plumbing fixtures out of there or is it just a plumbing company's office? It's, we think it's going to be a plumbing company's office, um, which would be allowed in either commercial general or industrial, light industrial. So this is a, in a gray area with the potential for issues. Does the city staff have a recommendation of whether we want to do this? Do we want to pick a potential fight? Well, we have not, uh, we do not have a recommendation at this time. We will be looking at it. It's been a topic of a lot of conversation at the staff level as to do we want this here? Potentials, <coughs> and you know, you rezone this to um, commercial general. Um, just if you look at the aerials, I don't know if we have it, um, it kind of sits like it could be a car lot um, pretty quickly, pretty easily converted into a car lot. Um, do we really want a car lot there? Um, you know, those types of things. So, didn't you say it was already zoned for car lot though? And mix you? No. Oh. They're asking to go to commercial general. And the question I was responding to whether it's spot zoning. If, if we went with what's across the street, which is light <coughs> oh, industrial, that's, that's then you would still get the plumbing, but you would still have the problem with car lots. So, we've had this conversation several times about. Uh, the timing of a city staff recommendation, uh, it would really help if we knew now. And I can't imagine that you're going to get any new information between now and next Tuesday that's going to change. Except we always, we get tons of new information all the time for all kinds of stuff. We will give our recommendation when we have to give our recommendation. Like there's, we just haven't had that conversation. Like we're not going to have a conversation about whether we are going to recommend approval when people are still getting stuff into us, you know, getting information into us. And then, you know, we have the set time this Friday when we sit down as a staff and we go through and you know, there could be, you know, any number of things. It could be a utility thing. It could be, you know, some other, you know, there's going to be some floodplain. Um, I don't know if we have that on here, but there's a floodplain over there. Um, but in general, um, I'm going to be very reluctant to give a recommendation until I have to give a recommendation. So what if you gave a recommendation subject to new information? I mean, I'm just trying to make this efficient. It would really be nice if we <coughs> knew the whole story. So now we're just sitting on hold 
waiting until next week until you guys finally get together at the very last minute. There may or may not be any new information. This doesn't seem a good way to run the show. Oh, sure. We could we could easily do that. It would just push everybody's development back further and further, and they would lose more and more money, and the city would lose more and more money. And, you know, the longer we stretch it out, the earlier that we get everything done, the more money gets wasted by, you know. I'm talking about expediting the process you guys just yeah. give us a recommendation but we'll move but, on with it but giving it i mean for us to get everything done that we get done in the time frame now and having to have all that done by the previous friday just pushes their deadline back for it i mean that's that's how we would do it if if we want to give um recommendations out there, there's a ton of liability for me to give a recommendation now when um that's not been our normal practice. It's not liability if you give it subject <coughs> to new information. So subject to would would be there's a process coming <coughs> afterwards and our recommendation, I mean, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like this is the way we've always we've Friday is when we're gonna make our recommendation. I, I can say all kinds of stuff right now, but it's just me talking. But you understand. You're going to say the words. City recommends to do it. City recommends not to do it. Sure. About a minute before we have to vote. Okay. That's what happens. Sure. That seems strange. I would like to know the recommendation if you hadn't had the meeting last Friday for this meeting, and then we can mull over in our own minds whether we want to go with the city or against the city on this next Tuesday instead of getting hit with it 45 seconds before we're having to make a vote. Okay, so in order to do that, I need to push the deadline for applicants to get in a, a week later. That sounds like a detail. We're just trying to do the right thing okay. based on having the full information subject to change. Deadlines, fix them. But I mean, this body votes on this stuff. Well, it's the opposite of expediting. Like it's the goal is to expedite. This doesn't do it. Well, we're trying to expedite our process. And I think we're perfectly in order if you give us some recommendation 45 seconds before we vote to say, that's nice. We want to wait a month and to, <clears throat> to consider this. Sure. And we normally give our recommendation at least, you know, Friday. You know, Come on now, you're grasping at hairs. But Tell we can't we know. can't discuss it amongst ourselves once we get that on Friday and, and part of the sunshine. Here's the do we have enough information right now for us to do our part? Because because there's been a lot of times that staff has recommended X and we've done Y. Mm -hmm. So let's do what we're supposed to do. And if you come back with something next week, we adapt to that and move forward. Strong that. Okay, so you guys are okay with 45 seconds notice. If something changes, we have, well, the, information. It, we have the information. Well, we've had the same conversation for, but we don't have a recommendation time. of any kind. But we've been in this situation before and still on the process. But we're trying to improve it at times. Well, I like the idea, Matt, that the uh, of uh, subject to subject to that. Uh, um, they get the information they can either say this doesn't cover it at all or whatever or it does subject to one two items that they haven't done yet mm -hmm. and if they get to one two three that, that have been done they're done then we're good to go next week so i'm not i'm not comfortable i'm, with you. I'm not comfortable with this kind of situation okay this we've only done this 10 times and I'm, i'll talk to the mayor this just seems ridiculous that we can't get on the same page. We're all trying to look out for the best thing for the city. And it really seems like you guys are playing <clears throat> games. You're just holding on to stuff. You know, information is power. <clears throat> as long as you hold the information. If you think I want power, you don't understand. <laughs> well, you I'm telling you, to... <laughs> what I'll I think and what think and, and your actions speak a different thing. It looks to me like you're just, it's a power grab so you can hold sure. on to it to the last minute. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, if, um, it's, you know, I think there's some respect to the applicant that has to be um, uh, 
Garner, certainly holding, you know, giving the recommendation, making the decision at the time that I have to make the decision or the staff has to make the decision, you know, whatever that time happens to be, we're going to do it when we have to do it. So I mean, if it's, if it's next, if it's last week, you know, it doesn't make any difference. There are some real world implications to it. Um, you know, the more stuff you do, you know, we can run these meetings very, very efficiently if that's the overriding goal of the city, um, or we can give everybody their due process. I mean, there's, there's. You're sounding like it's one or the other. Well, it is. We want due process for us. Sure. That we have the information. Yeah. Right. I don't, so don't, I mean, you're dancing around the subject here, as you've done many times before. My, you know, I'm not a developer, but my understanding for developers is the one, number one incentive we can give people is time. So the longer we push the process out for them. You're pushing it out. We're not. You just asked me to push it out. Well, we don't want you to push it out. We want you to have the meeting you're going to have this Friday, last Friday no, in so the future. And that way you can make a recommendation at this meeting right. subject to new information that may come along the, the remainder of this week. That way, if there's a recommendation that we disagree with, we can have an open conversation about it without violating the Sunshine Act. Sure. So, all right, we'll leave it on. <clears throat> Deal with it next week. 11 is off, number 12. Number 12 is a um, request by, <clears throat> requested by uh, for yard parking over the district. This is coming for, um, it was originally historic district. Um, the request now is to go to Ward 2 and Ward 3 for the parking um, overlay, the yard parking overlay. Um, because it's an increase in the area, then that's why it comes back here. If it was some minor changes in wording, then, then City Council does that every once in a while. And because the area of the yard parking overlay, um, it is coming back here. Um, we are limiting um, the front yard parking, saying in there 50%. That's different than what we had before. So that you, can, you have to be on a hard surface. It has to be well defined, and it can't be more than 50% of your, your front yard. Um, also, what's thrown in here that wasn't in here before was including RVs and, and boats. They have to be, they would have to be on hard surfaces or gravel. So those are the, the main changes that we've made. Area, Ward 2 and Ward 3, and those, those changes. Questions, thoughts? All right, it's on. Ruby. That's it. Um, one last thing, I just wanted to um, welcome our new acting uh, utility director, which is Regina, and our new um, development um, engineering director, acting, which is Maddie, and Kristen is now our acting um, director of engineering for transportation and special projects. Very nice. Good. I may have got those names. Those Should we congratulate you or <laughs> <laughs> congratulations or condolences, whichever way you want to take it? Um, we, we will also be uh, <clears throat> doing elections next month, yeah, next week. Good. All right, that is the agenda. Since we're done. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, Yes, sir. I was going to ask you if you want to review it for us. Uh, Beth's already went over it.